Without question, Tesla's worldwide network of superchargers and destination chargers are, at least if you own a Tesla Model S, Model X or Model 3, the best way to charge your electric car on the road. They're super reliable, super easy to use, and thanks to the new V3 superchargers and a tweak in power output for V2 superchargers, far quicker than any other public charging stations in use today. Although there are charging stations that aren't Tesla operated that do offer charge speeds in excess of 300 kilowatts, there are currently no vehicles on sale at the time of filming this that can actually charge at that rate. So, moot point. So when a video from the team behind the YouTube What's Inside channel went viral yesterday about a supercharger stall being covered up by the owner of a gas station who has claimed that Tesla had not paid him rent for the parking spots where the stalls were located, things went pretty crazy pretty fast. Before I go any further, I just want to point out after this video went viral that it appears that everything is now being sorted out and that the charging stations are now available to use again. That's great news. But what isn't great is the way that this all played off online, which is really the point of this video. This video is to clarify some misgivings people have about superchargers and other charging stations, as well as highlight how crazy some people have become when discussing Tesla online. And I mean both pro and anti-Tesla. Let's go back to the start. Yesterday, the short Twitter video from What's Inside shows LB, the owner of the property where the superchargers were located in Beaver, Utah, covering up some of the supercharger stalls on his land, telling Dan from What's Inside that Tesla hadn't paid rent since November last year and that Tesla was ignoring his phone calls and emails. LB said nobody would be allowed to charge on the stations until Tesla, quote, pays me what they owe me. Given how many followers What's Inside has on Twitter and YouTube and the subject of the video in question, it didn't take very long for massive hordes of commenters to descend on the thread and associated threads. LB and his family were accused by some of the more extreme fanboy commenters of some pretty heinous things, including, but not limited to, fraud, defamation and worse. Those on the other side, people who clearly had access to grind against Tesla, used the video as proof to allege Tesla was one trying to defraud people, suggesting this was the tip of the iceberg of many thousands, maybe even millions of dollars of unpaid bills. Both sides fought it out quite aggressively, spilling out from Twitter onto various other social media platforms and forums. Ultimately, this simple report gave rise to a series of different reports and anecdotes, which themselves turned into a series of distinct and separate tales full of sound and fury, which for the most part seemed to signify nothing. Many of those commenting to this thread allege that Tesla never pays rent on its supercharger locations, and thus the owner was lying, while others claim that the owner of the gas station was simply being greedy and should just be grateful for the business that Tesla owners using said supercharger site were bringing to his gas station. The hate against LB and his family was at times palpable. So let's stop dealing with the he saids and she saids and deal with what we know about Tesla and its supercharger sites. First up, Tesla does have a boilerplate contract on which it bases its supercharger contracts. However, like any contract, I'd expect the specific details to be different for each location. That's only standard legal practice to ensure that there's a tight legal framework on each agreement. I'm not a lawyer though, so I can only speculate here based on what I know about contracts and boilerplate. If you look online, you will find some examples of this boilerplate contract in which Tesla states that the counterparty, the owner of the site, quote, shall have no right to request or accept payment from Tesla, Tesla customers, or any other third parties in connection with Tesla charging services. Tesla does agree to pay for the electricity used by its superchargers, paying the utility directly if possible. The standard contract also allows Tesla to generate and store power on site. During a recent investor call, Elon Musk did confirm that Tesla does pay some supercharger sites rent. Some supercharger sites even pay Tesla. But these two situations appear to be exceptions rather than the norm. 
Nevertheless, to claim that Tesla never pays rent on its sites and thus say that someone is lying because they say they're owed rent is inaccurate because of the aforementioned exceptions. Without seeing the specific contract in question, it is impossible to say what the terms were for LB and his family. Second, in the case of this site in Utah, the charging stations being argued over are temporary palleted ones, similar to the urban superchargers that you find installed in some city centres. In this case, they appear to have been deployed to help deal with an increased demand at the site, and as such, I'm guessing they weren't deployed under the terms of the original supercharger contract. One news outlet claims that Tesla said there was some confusion on the part of the site owner, LB, and that the site is now back online. Another user claims that a new contract is being signed, which would back up our speculation, but without confirmation from Tesla, we did reach out and ask for a statement, but haven't yet received one at the time of filming this, it's difficult to know exactly what is happening. Which brings us to the point that LB alleges that started all of this, a lack of communication from Tesla. That's something the company is notorious for. Even hardened fans will admit that Tesla's communication skills are at best spotty. Unless, of course, you happen to catch Elon Musk's attention on Twitter. Customers can be seen complaining on social media about the lack of communication over repairs and spare parts. And when I'm at a press event, journalists often joke about how their emails and calls go unanswered. Uh, there are a few exceptions, and there are some fan sites that Tesla always responds to, but many, many more news sites and journalists are just ignored. It's not exactly hard to believe. This is the same communication breakdown that's happened in the case of the supercharger site in Beaver, Utah. In short, nobody is trying to pull the wool over anybody else's eyes. This isn't a giant conspiracy to hurt Tesla, and frankly, those who suggest it is are causing their own problems. A resolution has supposedly been reached according to at least some of the parties involved, and Tesla owners can, yet again, use that location to charge their cars. However, this all does teach us some useful lessons, if we're willing to learn. First, Tesla really does need to improve its communication. Its lack of communication on many different levels has the potential to harm the company long term, both internally and externally. Yes, it's fantastic that Tesla is selling and delivering more cars than it's ever done before, but without these solid communications, little problems will inevitably become big ones. Second, there are way, way too many people online who jump in with both feet when something like this comes up, firing allegations against others that are either outright false or unproven simply because they are fans or, or customers of Tesla, or they are conversely the opposite. Suggesting that Tesla move the superchargers elsewhere to somewhere where they will be, quote, appreciated, or accusing what's inside of planning this whole video for clicks is frankly despicable. Using it as a jump point to claim that not all is well at Tesla is equally as bizarre. As always, stopping, examining and questioning is the better route. Look at both sides of the evidence and then figure out what you think has happened. Don't let the mob make that decision for you. In a world where there are targeted campaigns against plug-in vehicle adoption and government agencies, at least in some countries, actively trying to roll back the clock on emissions regulations, the mob mentality of the internet does no favours to the adoption of plug-in cars. That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell, and if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, please do consider, if you can afford it, sending a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon, buy us a coffee using Ko-fi, or visit our merch store and buy one of our t-shirts. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving.